Thanks, Ian. Thanks very much for that kind introduction, and uh, thanks for your work this year. It's been an outstanding job, and sacrifice for the uh, for the team is uh, is very very important. And next year we'll take you up to Darwin, do a bit of wrestling with some crocodiles, and see if you can really stand up next year. But seriously, look, it's a privilege, indeed, a privilege to be president of the Melbourne Football Club, and I acknowledge the responsibility that goes with it. Um, I can tell you, I will put my heart and soul elbows, whatever it takes, into it, in helping Melbourne become strong and successful on and off the field. Um, welcome everyone to today's game. And I'd also like to welcome my, uh, one of my other boys, he snuck in, Adam Bartlett, um, as well for coming along today. But first of all, acknowledging our major partners, Webjet and Opal, and our match day partner today, Tourism Northern Territory. Thank you for your terrific support of our club. I'd also like to welcome representatives of the Fremantle Football Club and our host families, and from the AFL Commission, Linda DeSau and her husband, Tony Howard. The AFL has provided our club with a lot of guidance and support in recent times, and we're very grateful for your continued support. From the MCC Committee, Michael Happel, here today with Taddy, thank you for your support as well. And of course, to my directors and their partners. Um, in particular, I'd like to mention two directors. First, Peter Spargo, who has stepped up twice now in difficult circumstances. First, as interim CEO, and more recently as interim president. His passion for the club and generosity should be acknowledged. The way in which he has quickly supported me and the class in which he has done this, thank you, Peter. Self-sacrifice is what makes teams and great clubs well done. <laughs> to John Trotter, who has had a very difficult review to do of his own board. Key for us to get back to some real fundamentals, starting with the board and the governments of this football club. He's also got a key role now in the nominations committee for bringing on new directors um, and we hope to make some announcements shortly. And he's been working hard at this. Again, he's put many, many hours in behind the scene. I got to know Trotz very well on our first uh, footy fishing trip to Darwin some uh, three years ago. Great place to visit, the NT. Do yourself a favour, get up there and have a good look at it. There's plenty to do. But I won't thank Trotz too much. Bit of a footnote. Um, I didn't think five weeks ago for one moment that I'd be standing up here as president. The only thing, in fact, Trotz had been talking to me for some 12 or 18 months about coming onto the board, and we had lots of conversations, and the only thing that he mentioned on the way in was, you may want to keep the presidency in the back of your mind. And I thought three to five years uh, that was in the back of my mind. But sometimes in life, your number comes up. And when I thought about it, the challenges that the football club has, my background, when I was asked actually to step up, I really thought my time was up and it was something that I should really do and put my heart and soul into it. There are some other thank yous that I'd like to make too. I'd like to thank my fellow board um, and the AFL. I'd also like to thank all of those people who have sent me text messages offering congratulations, but also support and offering assistance and advice. Whilst I haven't been able to respond personally, uh, to all of those people um, yet, uh, I intend to. To the Foundation Heroes, what a great group we have in the Foundation Heroes. In my view, we will forever be indebted to Jim Steins and Don McClarty for the formation of this very special group of passionate demons who wiped the club's debt and again last Wednesday night raised an order of $450,000. It's been noted that I'm number 413 of that group, and it's a group that have welcomed me and again um, welcomed me to the club. The sponsors, all of our major sponsors for the whole season, all of our coterie groups, thanks very much. It's membership round. Thanks, of course, to our loyal and passionate members for all your continued support and looking forward very much. I'm very excited and looking forward to the future. Special mention to our Demon Army, not the cheer squad, 
but our demon army, which has now grown to over 400. And to Ryan and Sophie and the committee who lead that group, um, it is just fantastic. Um, they fly around the country to away games and the sacrifice they make and support for this club is fantastic. And also to Trots and Spargs for the financial and other support they provide that group. Now I'm very interested in action, but I know that I need to say a few words about my journey to this point, and I'll keep it um, brief, but what I hope to achieve, and more importantly, what I hope the club achieves. And I'll give you some update, a very brief update, on some very important activities at the club. You're probably wondering how a former Eagle and long-time West Australian resident becomes a demon. Well, what really happened, in short, is I moved to Melbourne with work and there was a challenge on. I was asked to come to Melbourne for two years. It's fair to say that I really embraced Melbourne. I found Melbourne people really welcomed me at a whole lot of levels. I formed a view in the first six months or so that I've always loved football, I've always loved an involvement. And I thought it was unacceptable to call yourself a true Melbourneian without following a Melbourne team. And who better than the oldest team in the AFL, the oldest footy club in the world, but in the AFL with names like Norm Smith, Ron Brassie, Robbie Flower, David Neese, I could go on. The Melbourne story is a great story and it made sense to me to support the team that bears the name of the most livable city. I received an intro introduction to attend a Mates of Melbourne lunch and met a great bunch of people over three years ago and that really led to meeting other people and getting far more involved and my involvement grew um, from there. I also felt when I was asked to step up, there was a bit of history. Um, I had a very short career, as Ian mentioned, with, with West Coast and that was a difficult period, but I went back to East Perth as captain and two years later worked hard, got drafted by the Brisbane Bears. I could tell you lots of stories about what followed, but um, I didn't play any games for the Brisbane Bears. And one of the things at the time was I was studying law and I was really quite interested in studying at an iconic university, University of Melbourne. And I found out that um, Brisbane were talking to Melbourne about a possible swap, but of course, Melbourne ended up they're looking for a full forward and they went for Alan Djakovic and made a better choice football-wise. No doubt about that. But I, I felt that it was a bit of fate that I've ended up, when the opportunity came up, to come back. And I'd unfinished business at Melbourne Footy Club to come back here and I've ended up here instead of uh, Brisbane and I'm very, very happy about that with the greatest respect. Um, to, our, to Brisbane Football Club and our competition. I'm very happy to be here. Some of my involvement has involved um, you know, then joining the President's Lunch and I felt very excited about coming here because there's a lot of people I've become close to in this group who I feel very much like uh, family. Foundation heroes, the same. The annual, Darwin, the annual Darwin footy fishing trip. I love the NT, I would not miss it. Um, I sponsored some breakfast forums a couple of years ago and I've placed that great 1956 picture of our fabulous team in our meeting room number 11 in memory of the great Jim Steins overlooking the MCG. Pretty passionate now, very passionate about the football club. What do I bring to the football club? Well, there's a lot of information on the website. I'm not going to go through um, all of that background. But in short, I think I bring a wealth of experience in football and business, but with fresh ideas for this club, a way of approaching difficult issues. I bring a, I think, a steady hand. I'm used to um, challenges, big challenges, and nothing new to me. I've developed over the years. Um, many difficult issues, dealing with difficult issues in football club, competition and business, including rebuilding, cultural change and restructures. But I want to now talk to you about some of my philosophies. Um, I'll just talk about some of my philosophies. Thanks, Matt. Um, football first. Footy first. What do I mean by that? 
I mean that everything we do in this football club must put football first. It means putting the best football department in place, the very best coaches, the best resources, the best team on the park, to give everyone the chance of the success that is well over, overdue. The administration, comprising the board and the management which are, of this club, which are very important, must be solid and stable. And we must gradually fall into the background because the governance, the structures, the people, the key people, our culture are all right. And then it becomes just all about marketing, marketing the team on the park. That's where the focus needs to be. And we need to be, have a solid and stable environment in the background. Always believe the club is bigger than the, than the individual. And that means self-sacrifice for the team regularly. Continuous improvement. We must be constantly getting better because you never stay the same in a competitive environment. If we're not getting better, then we're falling behind, right? Because our competition is getting better and better. Culture is very, very important. We clearly have a lot of work to do. What does Melbourne stand for? What are our values? Values that I personally believe in are respect, honesty, ruthlessness, we need a real harder edge, I believe. We need some real mongrel on and off the field about the way we go business, but with respect. Driving for excellence. We need to be professional in everything that we do. I'm a great believer in organisations that the survivors are very much affected by the way people leave the organisation. We need to work harder on looking after senior players, setting them up for football after life. If a club is ever a sleeping giant in this area, it's a Melbourne football club. We have so many um, resources, so many connections in business to actually help and develop our players, but we need to make development and opportunity a core in our business. My vision for the club, I think very much needs to be built around, we need to be respected. It doesn't just happen, a lot of work, make no mistake, you know, it's going to be actions that are going to count. But we need to become a powerhouse on and off the field. How do we do that? I'm not going to go into detail, a lot of detail, with my Fremantle friends sitting there, of course, but pretty much I think they might be onto this. The first thing we need to do is the way we go about business off the field. We need to be professional, done with integrity in everything we do. It's not all bad, by the way. But we need to be ruthless about getting this right in everything we do. On the field, we need to be similar. But it's really, in the end, it's about winning games. It's about winning finals and winning premierships. There is no other way. That's what we have to do. What I noticed when I came to the club, and I've been watching probably for three years and talking to a lot of people, I appreciate some people might not like this, but it's reality. There is a softer culture. I've had a lot of people say, look, we just want to be competitive. That was an honourable loss. The players tried hard. I understand it step by step. It doesn't happen overnight. But it's no such thing. We need to build a culture where the future, where nothing other than winning is acceptable. Success breeds success. And it's interesting if you have a read of the Red Fox when Checker Hughes came over here, premiership coach from Richmond, came here in 1932. We were called the Fuchsias then. He said we he had a view, the place needed to harden up. And he said we need to play like bloody demons. We need to play like bloody demons. It's interesting, I remember on my West Coast days, we never thought Melbourne was soft and the John Northey with Rod Grinter and people like that running around. So it can be changed, but it needs to be worked at. It needs to be relentless in the way we go about it. I've always been fiercely competitive. If you play me in table tennis, go fishing with me, um, I'm fiercely competitive. And I was walking down to court not long ago to defend a client dealing with an unfair dismissal case. It was a difficult case, but I was very well prepared. And the, on the way down, the client said to me, Glenn, this is really important to us. I really want to win the case. I really want to win the case. I said, geez, I'm glad you told me that, because I wasn't going to try. First up, I was going <laughs> to 
just go easy first up and then we might win it on appeal and hopefully end up in the High Court and win it in the High Court and get my name up light. So thanks for telling me. <laughs> I'm already tired of people poking fun at the Melbourne Footy Club, feeling sorry for Melbourne, not respecting Melbourne. When I say that, I can't imagine what it's like to have um, had 50 years of it or 20 years or 30 years of it. So I understand why some people might be cynical and we've heard it all before. Talk is cheap. We haven't done it all before. There's things happening. We haven't done this all before. I'm interested in the future. We need to build our own period of success. We need to be ruthless about the way we go about that. And it won't just happen, I'm not saying we've been doing this, but it won't just happen by relying on first round draft picks. Um, there's a whole lot of pieces to the puzzle that need to be put together. Determination is something that um, I really believe is critical. It's, it's a, um, a steel that I believe this playing group will be stronger when they come through this and they'll certainly be hungrier. It's character building, what's happening. I can speak about experience about this, I can speak at length, coming from the School of Hard Knocks. Um, we were going, we had some challenges, I can tell you the, the full story, but we had some challenges at one stage, at a club, where we had some serious injuries and we went skyrocketed down to the bottom of the ladder for a couple of years. We were 10 goals up in a game at half time once we lost the game by three points. The confidence was shattered. The coach got so frustrated at training that he made us put the balls down and came up, came up with an imaginary football. We're to imagine we're kicking and training with this football. We were going so bad, we still had, I think, guys fumbling this imaginary football. We had one... <laughs> coaches, coaches don't like this, but we had one deliberately kick it over the fence and climb over the fence and bring it back. The players thought it was funny until the team got penalised with push-ups and 400s, but... That's how bad we were going, but through hard work, sticking together and leadership is what really got us back on track. Why am I telling you this? Because it is a rocky road. We need to respond to adversity. We need to hold our head up. We need to be defiant in defeat. We need to keep things in perspective. We can't accept mediocrity. I understand it. I have been in situations um, as a player. They need, in my view, stability. They need leadership. They need an environment created where there are no excuses. Winning is expect expected. The best excuse is no excuse. There are no excuses. It's not so long ago, if I can say with the greatest respect, that the Fremantle Football Club had their challenges on and off the field. I certainly respect uh, what they have done. I think the football world respects the way you've turned things around, Steve, um, off the field and now under Ross on the field. I wish you the very best for the rest of the season. Um, however, we're hoping just quietly to give you a bit of a tune-up for the finals uh, today and I'm predicting a big upset today. The vision I have about this club is that it's the club of the city. It is just that. Our brand should be iconic with the city of Melbourne, the MCG and everything that makes the city great. When we play Fremantle, which is a great little place, Fremantle, when Fremantle come and play here in our stadium, it should be David versus Goliath, right? Just to clarify, and we should be Goliath, whereas at the moment, it probably feels a little bit the other way around, and that needs to be rectified. I would like our children to proudly go to school, our club to be the envy of their mates, the envy of the opposition and the opportunities we create for players, the way we go about our business. The envy in terms of rivalry we create with the Fremantle, with the Sydney, building the Collingwood, Essendon, the rivalry, the envy of all of that. We've clearly got a lot of work to do. But most of all, I want the Melbourne Football Club to be respected as an elite sporting club, one that has a fantastic culture on and off the field and is respected in everything. 
that we do. Bit of a brief update now in terms of developments in the club. Obviously been appointed as president on Friday. The first thing if I had a board meeting I would have said is that we need the best CEO in the business for the challenges that we're facing. And we've got the best CEO in my view and Peter Jackson for what we need to do. No pressure Peter. But in my view, we couldn't have a better person. But I'd just like to clarify one thing. Excuse me. Um, it has been said, and even reported in the media, that we have been friends or known each other for a long time. That is not true. I mean, turn it up, these things that people say. I met Peter for the first time less than two months ago. I believe I hit it off with him pretty well straight away because he's a straight talker who knows the AFL business. And in the time that I've known him, I've developed a healthy respect for him in the way he goes about what he does and the professionalism that he brings to this football club. We have some critical decisions to make regarding sponsors, senior coach and new board members. It is established Sorry, it is, it is imperative that the club established a leadership structure to support Peter. Hence, why my appointment has been made now, and the next few weeks we plan to add more members to the board. I've mentioned the work John Trotter has done, and in that review and discussions, we've identified some specific areas at board level where we need more skills and experience. Finance, cultural change, people and culture, and connection with the Melbourne business community. But in every case, we need to keep an eye on diversity as well, including gender, but much broader than that. I want to thank, we've had more than 30 very impressive people put their hand up who have an interest in coming on the board of Melbourne Football Club. The nominations committee comprising John Trotter, Russell Howcroft and Andrew Dillon from the AFL are interviewing and going through the process. Please be patient, but we need to get the best board in place, covering all skills for the Melbourne Football Club, and we intend to do that as quickly as possible. As President, I'll now take an active interest in that process and hopefully helping to push it along, because it's so important that we have a stable, well-managed club and that the change that's critical to our club at this time is done in a way, and it goes back to my earlier point about our club being about footy and that matters of governance in the end fade quietly into the background. The next critical appointment for us, of course, to stabilise and strengthen the club is the appointment of the senior coach. We have to get this right. And we won't simply react or jump into it. We have to get it right following a comprehensive process appoint the best coach to take this club forward. From a governance perspective, let the panel do their work. I have great faith in the panel we've put together, who will interview the candidates and I look forward to receiving their recommendations. Obviously, the sooner the better, but it's critical to get this right. There are a number of appointments that then will flow uh, from getting that right and will then, I think, be well and truly on our way. The final person, and thank you for bearing with me, but this is really important, the final person I would really like to thank is Neil Craig. When Neil signed up to Melbourne, he did not sign up to take on the role of caretaker coach in very, very difficult circumstances. The manner in which he has approached the task, the can-do attitude he is instilling in the players, and from a couple of conversations I've had with Neil, the values and character he's displaying in these circumstances needs to be acknowledged. Thank you, Neil Craig, for what you have done, what you are doing and how you are going about it. <laughs> Finally, I look forward to our growth as a football club 
working with all of the key stakeholders and for every heart beating true for the red and the blue. Thank you for coming today and of course for your continued support in 2013. I hope in the words of Checker Hughes, we play like bloody demons today. Gay demons. <laughs> <laughs>